Hey guys, Paul here once again with another Blu-ray review and today we are talking about Fred Olin Ray's Scalps on Blu-ray and this was released by Retro Media, which I believe is his company. This I think is the third Blu-ray he released. The first was Hollywood Chainsaw Hookers that was released uh, in a limited 2000 maybe, two or 3000 and each of those were signed. And then he did Biohazard, which was also signed. This is also limited uh, to 2,000 copies, but for some reason these are not signed. Not sure why. Maybe he was getting sick of signing all these covers because um, that would be thousands and thousands of covers. He already did like several thousand for Hollywood Chainsaw Hookers and then Biohazard and I guess by this point he's sort of fed up with signing all these covers so he's taking a break and he did not sign scalps. Yeah, on the back here, like I said, this one is limited to 2,000 copies. Now, let's first look at the artwork for this movie. The artwork is not impressive. Now, I believe that Monogram Pictures kind of put this Blu-ray together um, with, of course, the assistance of Fred Olin Ray. But if you look at the picture quality directly on this uh, cover, this is, I guess, the original poster art. It is just not impressive. It looks absolutely terrible. I wouldn't say pixelated, but it's really grainy, and I suspect they got this image from and something floating around on the internet because when I looked at the 88 Films cover which for this movie which is going to be released in a, I think March it is such a crisp image on that I'm not a huge fan of 88 Films although I did like a few of their releases but I gotta give it to them and they did a great job on fixing up this artwork this is just really really not sharp it's just pretty ugly looking I don't think you could really see it on the camera here now, another problem I have with this cover is this terrible logo here. What the heck is this? Now, Scalps does have a logo married to the movie. By that I mean it has a logo in the title card. This is the same logo that is on the 80 Films release. It's the same logo that I believe is also on the Continental VHS release and a few other VHS releases. Why are they doing this? I don't understand. The Scalps logo is pretty cool. It's unique, it's special, it's not just some font found on some font website. So yeah, this looks hideous, this logo. Um, and then you get a different font on the spine here. It's a different font, looks similar, but it's different. And then you got a different font on the inside cover there. Like, I don't understand, what was wrong with the original logo? So let's look at the features here, let's see what it says on the back. This is a 2K scan from the 35mm negative with the censored scenes restored via tape sources. So that's good that they put that on there so they're not trying to cover anything up. You know, you don't want some somebody to buy this and they're looking at the best scenes in the movie, which of course are the, the graphic scenes and they're all grainy or they just look terrible. So it's good to be honest with that and put that on the back here. But uh, it has a commentary track by Fred Olin Ray. Now I love Fred Olin Ray's commentary tracks. He's so articulate and he's very honest and open about every aspect of making the movie. In fact, he talks quite extensively about uh, the print. Trying to hunt down a good print of this movie, he talks extensively about the censorship and what they had to do to try to get those scenes back in the movie. But what else is on here? Remembering Scalps, a 22 minute video featurette. Uh, I guess that's interesting, but there's nothing on there that really isn't spoken about in depth on the commentary track. I guess it's cool to just see these people, how they look today, as they're talking about the movie. But otherwise, most of the information that you want to know about this movie is probably in that commentary track. It's very dense and Fred is always talking. There's not like this long extended gap of him not talking, so that's pretty good. Also on here is the original 35mm trailer, which is nice. Um, but then there's these two other things on here which I wouldn't say they hurt the release but they don't make it better either. The first of those is scenes from the unauthorized remake of Blood Desert. Now that movie, if I remember correctly, was made by some Canadian guy who moved to this other country and he was a big fan of scalps I guess and he made, uh, as Wikipedia describes it, a protest film. But uh, it is very eerily similar to Scalps. That movie you cannot find anywhere. Probably because it is an unauthorized remake. I can't find any information about that, but there is a scene on here. This says scenes, scenes, plural, uh, from the unauthorized remake, but you're only getting one two minute scene. So it's very brief and very short, and it really doesn't give an overall impression of that remake. If there was a trailer for this remake, that would have been 
much better. I guess they didn't have that. In the commentary, Fred actually says that he contacted the director of that movie for the scene to put on here. So um, maybe there wasn't a trailer. I'm sure if there was a trailer for that, I'd rather he would have put that on here. I'd much rather have seen that. And then there's this last feature on here. Scallops 2, The Return of DJ, a fan film. Now, at the very end of Scalps, after the credits, the actual original movie, there actually is like a little tease or an inside joke, I guess. It says, coming soon, Scalps 2, the return of DJ. So I guess at some point, probably back in the early 2000s, some fans came together and they actually made <laughs> a little short amateur film. Now, it's in terrible picture quality. It's really just a bunch of kids running around with a camera. It's just, I don't want to come down too hard on a bunch of amateur kids making a movie, but it's really rough to watch. I think it was maybe 20 minutes long. Like I said, it doesn't hurt the release that it's on here, but it really doesn't add anything to it either, so. But yeah, those are the features. Now, another issue that I have with the, I guess, packaging of this is the DVD menu or the Blu-ray menu. The authoring process. Um, you're getting a little bit of a glimpse of it right here and as you can see there is no <laughs> title of the movie on the main page on the main menu of the blu-ray. How absurd is that? It doesn't make any sense. It should always be on there. Also as you can see from the menu is that it's just one page. I noticed that some people or some companies are starting to get really lazy like Code Red I believe is starting to do this where they just have the all the features on the main menu. I like when things are organized. I like when there's a play button on the main menu. I like that there's a page for the chapters and I like that there's a page for the special features. Why are you globbing everything up together? I don't like that. I just don't think it looks as nice. So as for the movie itself, I'll be brief. Uh, the movie is from, I think, 1981 or 1982. I think it was Fred's second or third movie. Um, you could really tell from watching this movie, it was just cobbled together. It was shot in 16 millimeter and it's pretty rough. He wrote the script within 24 hours, I think, he says. Now, to get this film on Blu-ray, Fred, of course, had to find the original prints of this movie. And unfortunately, the only three prints that he had seen for this movie are all censored versions. Apparently, what the distributor did, 21st Century, I believe, they took the film and they covered up... They didn't cut anything out. Instead, they just covered up the gore scenes with pictures of Indians and totem poles and weird things like that so the duration of the censored version and the unrated version are the same they just like I said covered up those graphic sequences some of them weren't even graphic so it's strange that they even cut them out but they covered them up with I think stills of Indians as he says I would like to see those scenes like those inserts that they used to cover up the gore scenes I think that would be interesting why is that not on here it would have been cool to have two versions of this it would have been the censored version because I don't know, part of me thinks it might be funny to kind of see these weird screenshots of Indians over the gore scenes. Might be weird and awkward. At least have a little featurette on here showing some of that stuff that was used to censor the movie. But that's not on here. He talks about it, but I really wish that that was on here because it really puts into perspective some of the censorship problems this film had. But you can tell immediately which scenes were censored because they're using a VHS print of the uncut scenes and splicing them into the new 2K transfer from the original film elements. So it's really gritty, it's grainy. You can tell that they did some good work on trying, trying to touch it up, but it's still pretty rough to watch. And it's kind of sad because it's all the most interesting scenes in this movie. <laughs> that look like that because this is a pretty boring movie it just drags i think it's like a five minute scene of them driving into the desert and there's some shots of some birds in the sky and and the landscape and there's a lot of padding in this movie certainly and the most interesting shots are the ones censored it just sucks but you know hopefully those surface someday this is the same sort of issue silent night deadly night had Whereas they had to use tape sources to splice into back into the movie when they were creating the DVD or Blu-ray. So it's really sad that this sort of thing happens. When this was released to VHS, it was only released uncut once according to Fred Olin Ray. And that was the double feature of the Continental Video release. It was this movie and a movie called Slayers. Well actually it was uncensored but it was cut for duration to fit two movies on one cassette. And that's the only source that Fred had for these uncensored shots of the movie. So it's really sad that that had to happen. I mean he I think says that even like all the video prints from around the world are also censored. It is just that Continental Video release that has those gore scenes in it. 
And so that's that sucks. Why is that? You gotta wonder, you gotta think like, how does a film print go missing? Really? Like, they're big, they're in cans, and I know someone might think, oh, just throw them away. We don't know what this movie is. Somebody cleaning out a, a, a shed or a storage unit or something. But what kind of people out are there out there that wouldn't be curious to want to know what that is? It could be some something majorly historic. Why would you just throw it out? What I'm saying is that these prints have to be somewhere. The unrated cut from Sunlight, Deadly Night, and Scalps. I mean, those... They had to work with some print to make those unrated, uncut versions on VHS. Where are those? They gotta be somewhere. And this is the problem with today, or maybe the past 20 years, is that people just, they just don't think, they just get rid of stuff. But it's just a travesty, and I really hope that someday that those elements appear. But a lot of these distributors were very shady, they all went bankrupt, and who the hell knows what happened to those. With all that said, I would still recommend Scalps on Blu-ray. It's the best this film's ever going to look right now, unless these elements appear. So, even just for the commentary track alone, it's worth it, so... You're not getting great packaging, great menu design, certainly not. But that commentary track is great, and it is going to be the best print of the movie that you're going to find, unless the 80 Films one does some additional work to it. I don't know. But uh, this one, according to what I read online, is still going to have a few more features than that 80 Films one. It has the commentary track, but it's not going to have Remembering Scalps, unless they add it later. Right now, it doesn't say that it includes it, so... So yeah, pick it up. If you're into slasher films, and there's some of that in here, although they're all gritty and, and from terrible sources, I would still say get it. It has a lot of interesting stuff in the commentary, like I said, but uh, it's going to be, if you're into this movie, this is going to be the best version you're probably going to get. So, at least for now, it's those prints have found. So, this has been Paul with VHSCollector.com. Keep a lookout for my other reviews, and I will see you guys next time.